In one example of many, certain prominent conservative users, including some of our colleagues uh, who have come to us, Representative Meadows, Jordan, Gates, were not shown in the automatically populated drop-down searches on Twitter, correct? Out of the more than 300 million active Twitter users, why did this only happen to certain accounts? In other words, what did the algorithm take into account that led to prominent conservatives, including members of the U.S. House of Representatives, not being included in auto search suggestions? What caused that? Thank you for the question. So we, um, we use signals, um, usually hundreds of signals, to determine and to decide what to show, uh, what to downrank, or potentially what to filter. In this particular case, as I mentioned in my opening, uh, we were using a signal of the uh, behavior of the people following accounts. And we didn't believe uh, upon further consideration and also seeing the impact, which was about 600,000 accounts, uh, pretty broad base, that that was ultimately fair, uh, and we decided to correct it. We also decided uh, that it was not fair to use a signal for filtering in general. And we decided to correct that within search as well. And it is important for us to, one, be able to experiment freely with these signals and to have the, um, to have the freedom to be able to inject them and also to remove them, because that's the only way we're going to learn. We will make mistakes along the way, and the way we want to be judged is making sure that we recognize those and that we correct them. And what we're looking in terms for in terms of whether we made a mistake or not is this principle of impartiality and specifically impartial outcomes. And we realized that in this particular case and within search that we weren't driving that and right. we could have done a better job there. L let me ask you another question. Could bots game the system and work to block or silence certain voices, political or otherwise? We, we are always looking for patterns of behavior uh, intending to amplify information um, artificially. And that information could include actions like blocking. So that's why it's important that we don't just use one signal, but we use hundreds of signals and that we balance them accordingly. Uh, there is a perception that a simple report of a, term, of a violation of a terms of service will result in action or downranking. That is not true. It is one signal that we use and right. weigh according to other signals that we see across the network. I, I have one final question. I asked followers of Twitter, or Twitter followers I have, and one from Oregon asked why Twitter relies exclusively on users to report violations. Uh, this is a matter of scale. So today, in order to remove tweets or to remove accounts, we do require a report of the violation. And that report is reviewed by an individual. Those reports are prioritized based on the severity of the report. So death threats have a higher prioritization than all others, and we take action on them much faster. We do have algorithms that are constantly proactively searching the network and specifically the behaviors on the network and filtering and downranking accordingly. And what that means in terms of filtering is it might filter behind an interstitial. An interstitial is a graphic or element within our app or service that one can tap to see more tweets or show more replies. So in some cases, we are proactively, based on these algorithms, hiding some of the content, causing a little bit more friction to actually see it. And again, those are models that we constantly learn from and, right. and evolve as well. Now recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pallone. 